Hello everyone. Today we're going to be going over this question 4 of paper 2 of the sample assessment material for IGCSE for the fear of math. Now this question is about polynomials and you might either have to use the remainder theorem or synthetic division to do it. We're going to use synthetic division since generally that's quite fast. So for A, show that P is 1 and find the value of Q. We have this polynomial here with two unknown coefficients and they want us to find it. They've given us two true statements, so fx over x plus 3 will have something remainder 0, and the other true statement is that the differential of fx over x plus 3 is something with a remainder of 37. So we need to find the values of p and q, Showing that p is 1 is essentially the same as finding the value of q, and so we will figure this out. First off, we will demonstrate that when we divide fx by x plus 3, it is equal. we will find what it's equal to in terms of p and q, and a constant maybe, and that will be equal to 0. So that's one equation, and then we will evaluate this to find other equation and then solve as simultaneous equations. So let's quickly do that. Let's set up this synthetic division and we have coefficients 2, p, q, and 12. And our test 0, since x plus 3 is equal to 0, our test 0 is x is equal to negative 3. So we bring the 2 down, 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. 3 plus minus 6 is 3 minus 6. 3 minus 6 times minus 3 is minus 3p plus 18. And add that up. q minus 3p plus 18. And finally, you multiply by negative 3 again. And you get minus 3q plus 9p minus 54. And you add these up to get the fact that minus 3q plus 9p is, well, minus 42 is equal to 0, and so minus 3q plus 9p is equal to 42, and I can see that we can divide everything by 3 to get, or, yeah, we can divide everything by 3 to get that minus q plus 3p is equal to 14. 3p minus q is 14. So that's our first equation. We know this to be true. And then we'll find the differential of x, fx, f prime x. And that will be equal to, well, 2x cubed differentiated is 6x squared. And then bx squared differentiated would be. 2bx, because you're bringing the power down and multiplying, and qx differentiated would be just q. And of course, the constant 12 differentiated is 0, so that's not taking into account here. And when we divide this by x plus 3, the remainder is 37. So let's perform this synthetic division. We have 6, 2p, and q. And again, our test 0 is minus 3, so we bring the 6 down, and we get minus 18, so 2p minus 18. And then minus 3 times 2p minus 18, you get minus 6p, and then minus 3 times minus 18 is plus 54. So q minus 6p plus 54 would be equal to 37. So let's just bring this over here so you can evaluate it easier. Q minus 6P plus 54 equal to 37. So therefore, Q minus 6P is equal to minus 17. Now, I'm going to write it with P in front so that we can easily perform the simultaneous equation that we want to later. So minus 6P plus Q is equal to minus 17. For now, we know this is true, and we know this other equation is true, so we will perform the simultaneous equation here. So, 
3p minus 2 is equal to 14. And then minus 6p plus q is equal to minus 17. And I think we will add these expressions to each other because a minus q plus a positive q will equate to nothing, and it gets rid of that q. So we get minus 3p is equal to minus 3, or p is equal to 1. And then as p is equal to 1, 3 times 1 minus q is equal to 14. Therefore, 3 minus q is equal to 14. And minus q is equal to 11. And finally, we find that q is equal to negative 11. So for a, p is 1, q is minus 11. Factorize that x completely. All right, so when we want to factorize this out, and we know that it is now two x cubed plus x squared minus eleven x plus twelve. And we know this is divisible by x plus 3. First, we can divide that out. So, if we perform the synthetic division here, yes, I know, I'm a big fan of this process because it is easy to use. So, we'll divide it by x plus 3. And we bring the 2 down, you get 2. 2 times minus 3, minus 6, add it up, minus 5, minus 5 plus minus 3, positive 15, get this, positive 4, and then minus 3 times positive 4, minus 12, and then 0, and you get that this whole expression is equal to x plus 3 times 2x squared minus 5x plus 4. Now, what do we do from here? We will We will have to see if this is factorable at all because hmm, perhaps since um, if we wanted to factor by grouping, our AB would be 8 and our A plus B would be times 5. Are there any factors of 8 that meet this criteria? You have minus 1 minus 8, which is plus 9 minus 2 minus 4, which goes to minus 6. And then you're just flipping them around. So, in actual fact, we don't have any 8s that can factor out. So, I would say that this form here is completely factorized. And if we look at this question, show that the equation fx equals 0 is only one real root. That's a big hint as to why our answer for b is already factorized, because this is clearly having a real root. And if this is not factorable, then and it contains no real roots, then clearly it would not be factorable anyway. And it is likely to give only complex roots for this equation. So we need to show that it has only one real root. So, we know it has the real root of x is equal to minus 3. 
and there are no real roots or And if remember, recall that if you want to prove that a quadratic equation has no real root, you, you simply need to look at the discriminant, which is the part under the square root in the quadratic equation, which is b squared minus 4ac. So b squared minus 4ac is 25 minus 4 times 2 times 4, be 25 minus 32. So, b squared minus 4ac is, is a negative number, so complex roots only. <laughs> 2x squared minus 5x plus 4 times x plus 3 equals fx x plus 3 denotes the only real root to x squared minus 5x plus 4 has no real roots Alright, so I want to talk a bit about the alternative method to do question A. And that is essentially, instead of using synthetic equation, you use the remainder theorem. So that uh, the f, f of a test 0, for example, f of minus 3, that would be equal to 0. And then essentially, you just evaluate it by setting x to minus 3. And this will give you, I think, I don't, I'm not sure if it's the same equation, but it should be quite close. This will give you an equation as well as the f prime of minus 3 being 37. These will both give you equations that you can also solve simultaneously to find the values of p and q. There's simply two different main ways of achieving the same result, and you should pick either one depending on what you are comfortable with. So, because in further pure exams, speed is 1000% p. Alright, so let's go to the Mark scheme and check if we were correct. We said that p is 1, q is minus 11. We said that this expression was completely factorized. And we said that there are no real roots for 2x squared minus 5x plus 4. Alright, so it turns out in the mark scheme, they are using this, um, they are using the method of the remainder theorem. And as you can see, they got a similar equation at the end, 14 is equal to 3p minus 3. And additionally, they also got that q is equal to 17 minus 6p, or rather, this was the equation that we ended up using in the end. So. Yeah, the remainder here will get you the same result as uh, any either one. And finally, we find that p is 1 and q is minus 11. So, of course, we could do this method, the substitution method for solving it, but we just solved it in the way of simultaneous equations instead. So, q is minus 11, tick. We've got these results. Alright, so part B. 2x cubed plus x squared minus 11x plus 12 over x plus 3 is equal to this expression. And uh, this was the complete factorization of it. Yep. And as b squared minus 4ac is equal to minus 7, so 7 hence no real root for quadratic factor. 
I found that this was a typo, it did say minus 7, and it's no real root for quadratic factor, so x is minus 3 is the only real root. Yep, we came to the same conclusion, and that was correct. Right, 10 marks. Thank you for watching, and have a great time as we